channel everyone and today I kind of want to get into something that's kind of been on my heart you know and the video is going to be called left versus right you know and this whole left and right thing is why people are divided and it's on purpose but anyways I want to start with Proverbs 4 25 to 27 let thine eyes look right on straight ahead right not looking to the left or to the right straight ahead let thine eyelids look straight before thee ponder the path of thy feet and let all the ways be established right and this is why Jesus says gird your loins with truth right you know and I think it's Paul you know he says prove all things right so let all thy ways be established prove you know the truth right you've done your due diligence and uh, turn not to the right hand nor to the left remove thy foot from evil and we're, we're going to see the whole dichotomy here right and I'm going to give you a couple of scriptures right here Proverbs 316 still in Proverbs <laughs> length of days is in her right hand and in her left hand riches and honor it's not just the left you know or just the right there's both hands here right and the more you start looking you know towards left and right you're gonna start disliking the other side right you know or if you use one hand your or let's say you use your left hand your right side's gonna atrophy <laughs> you know what I mean so you need both now not with the subject I'll be getting into which we should stay away from both but anyways I digress Oh, you know what? Let me bring this up. With Just put that up. It should give me that cap. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, and against spiritual wickedness in high places. Now, we should definitely expose darkness, right? But people aren't the goal or, you know, we shouldn't be going against people or hating people. You know what I mean? Doesn't matter if they're left, right, whatever. See, when you take yourself kind of away from that right and left paradigm, you kind of have a heart for both people, right? I think a lot of problems with Christians today is is they're all on this right side and they want nothing to do with the left side you know well Jesus says you know here if you go into somebody he basically says if you go into um, preaching to people that you love and that already you know believe it or whatever well what good are you doing? Here, let me see if I can find that. To see if this will bring it up. No. No. Hold on, let me see if I can put something else in there. Here we go. Okay, this is this is actually a good one. It's not the one I was looking for, but it's a really good one. Luke six thirty-two through thirty-six. 
For if ye love them which love you, or maybe this is, okay, what thank have ye? For sinners also love those that love them. And if ye do good to them which um, do good to you, what thank have ye? For sinners also do even the same. And if you lend to them of whom ye hope to receive, what thank have ye? For sinners also lend to sinners to receive as much again. But love ye your enemies, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing again. And your reward shall be great, and ye shall be the children of the highest. For he is kind unto the unthankful, and to the Wait. For he is kind unto the unthankful and to the evil. Be, um, be ye therefore merciful, as your Father also is merciful. So we need to stop aligning ourselves with groups, you know. And usually these groups, they'll start out good, right? But then, you know people come in unawares right who uh let's just say control both sides right this happens in every war this has gone throughout history it's nothing new right you have a group of people who start in really you know i should say who sometimes start these groups right on both sides which we have today right with the right and the left they start these groups and then they get them to bicker fight blah 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 blah, blah but in the end they're controlling both right that's why you see you know the right hand and the left hand pretty much end up being the same exact thing because they're controlled by the this group right and they and what and what they do their tactic has always been is you get people emotional right the the christian or the mainstream christian or christian church does this get you emotional make you feel good right and um it gets that the endorphins going and then you don't think straight you know you don't go hey wait a minute that's not in the bible you know hey that you know that's not in the bible you know what i mean it's a tactic and not only that they become the dealer what i mean by that is um i don't know like I used to get this great feeling, right, when I would go to church. And it was like, man, I, I feel great. And then it would wear off, right? And it's like, man, I, you know, I, I need to go to church again. You know? And it's what happens. <laughs> you get this emotional feeling, right? And it becomes all about the emotion and how, thing, and how you feel instead of about what the truth is, right? This is what's happening. This is on both sides, too, of the coin. Both sides have this problem. They may not think they do, but they do. Both sides think they're the moral high ground, but in, you know what the truth is? None of us are good. You know, the only good thing about us is if you're a Christian, you have Jesus Christ in you, right? That's about it. He was the only one who was good, the only human that was truly good right so we need to stop get this hate out of our minds you know yes let's say transgenders and you know homosexuals stuff like that right we need to stop hating do we agree with what they're doing no should we preach the gospel to them yes if they're willing to hear it right we can, we shouldn't gatekeep now that doesn't mean you start adopting their ways and stuff like that but we need to start bringing love and respect to people instead of saying now 
we can talk about hell and all that you know what i mean but we have to remember we deserve to go there as well right i don't know about you but i definitely do you know but anyways let's let's keep going i apologize kind of went a little too long on that one oh yes so and then we got um genesis 48:14 and Israel stretched out his right hand and laid it upon Ephraim's head, who was the younger, and his left hand upon Manasseh's head, guiding his hands wittingly, for Manasseh was the firstborn. So now we have these two, you know, the two sticks, right? And you can't have one without the other. Or else it falls apart. You know what? This is actually a good one to bring. The old Jesus quote. <laughs> if a house divided. Yep. Yeah. You know, Jesus was very smart, wasn't he? Mark 3.25 And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. This is what you're seeing in America today. Let's go ahead and get out of that. So now we're going to get into where the, the, the left hand and the right hand really come from. So this is 2 Ezra 11. This is an extra biblical book. I don't hold, It was in the 1611 Bible, but I don't necessarily hold it up there, right? So anyways... On the second night I had a dream. I saw an eagle with twelve feathered wings and three heads rising up from the sea. Interesting. As it looked, or as I looked, it spread its wings over the whole earth, and all the winds of heaven blew toward it, and the clouds gathered around it. Out of its wings grew opposing wings. Okay. Let me get out of that before I get too far. Let me see here. Okay. Since we were do to do. Okay, and I looked and noticed two of the six little wings were set apart and remained under the head on the right side. But four remained in their places. I watched as these little wings plotted to rise up and take power. See how this is going? These are probably the powers that be, the human powers that be, right? Maybe I shouldn't say that, but anyways. Okay, um, one raised up, but it immediately disappeared. Then a second, but this one disappeared more quickly than the previous one. I saw the two that were left plotting amongst themselves that they too should rule. And while they were making their plans, one of the heads that had been at rest, the one in the middle woke up. This one was bigger than the other two heads. And I saw it formed a partnership with the two other heads. Then, So that middle head is Satan, by the way. And the two, I would say one is the Assyrian, the other I'm not sure of just yet. And I saw something like a lion being roused. Oh, whoops. And then that head turned to those that were with it and ate the eight see how the kingdom of darkness works ate the two little wings that had planned to rule moreover this head gained power over the whole earth and dominated those who lived on it inflicting great distress it had great power over the whole world than all the wings that had gone before after all this I watched as the middle head, just like the wings, suddenly disappeared. I wonder what happened. Oh yeah. This. Right here. 
Now is the judgment of this world. Now shall the prince of this world be cast out. Jesus is saying now, when Jesus was on the earth, right? So, now you see it suddenly disappeared. There were two heads left. However, which also ruled over the earth and over those who lived on it. I looked and watched as the head on the right side devoured the one on the left. I heard a voice saying to me, Look in front of you and consider what you see. So if you noticed and looked and I watched as the head on the right side devoured the one on the left. We may be seeing a little tiny version of that. So let me just say this. Don't trust the right wing. Don't trust the left wing. Look straight ahead. Keep your eyelids straight, right? But anyways. Now this is this is awesome right here. I want you to ask the question, who is this? I looked and saw something like a lion being roused, roaring out of the forest. I heard how he spoke in a human voice, interesting, and said to the eagle, Listen, you, and I will speak to you. The Most High says to you, Aren't you the last of the four beasts that I made to rule in my world, so that I might bring about the end of my times through them? You, the fourth that has come, conquered all the beasts that came before you, ruling over the world with much terror and over the whole world with harsh oppression. You have lived in the world with deceit for so long. You judged the earth, but not in truth. For you have oppressed the meek. Sounds a little bit, <laughs> you know, like today, doesn't it? And injured those who caused no one rest. You hated those who spoke the truth and loved liars. You destroyed the dwellings of those who bore fruit and tore down the walls of those who had done you no harm. Your insolence has ascended to the Most High and your pride to the Mighty One. The Most High has revealed His times. Look, they are finished and His ages are complete. Therefore, Eagle, you must utterly vanish. You and your terrifying weeks, your dreadful little wings, and your evil heads, and your dreadful talons, and all your worthless body. Then the whole earth will be refreshed and restored, set free from your violence, and will hope for all the judgment and the mercy of him who made it. So, let me do this. Take a look at that. Here's the Russian one, right? Got a little crown here with no head. Interesting. I wonder who that is. Here's another one. Here's another one. It's a Russian Empire. Let's go with Let's see if we can get different countries here. This has been throughout all, like, I gotta remember how to spell the Ottoman Empire. Okay, right there. Oh, I spelled it way wrong. So here's the Byzantine Empire. There's the Ottoman Empire. No idea what that is. This is the Byzantine Empire. Just a random eh? two headed eagle inside the church of the Cape of Radon and Cape of Skanderberg. So it's all over, isn't it? interesting so now so if you notice there was a left head and a right head right but this guy right here on Korra 
had the best explanation for this stuff, right? So, so the left-handed path is not what it seems. It's not, you know, I, I, I should say when he explains about um, that they're the same thing, okay? That's what I mean about this. I'm not saying um, the left-handed path and all that is a good thing, right? Neither is the right-handed path. I'm just saying it's the same thing. So, sorry about that. I had a better one in a video I did way a year or two ago. And I couldn't find that. So, anyways. The left-handed path is not what it seems. It's not evil nor of the ego. It is the same principles, ready, as the right-handed path. But the magicians explore things that some would not. It also uses anger, fear, etc. And learning how to work with it rather than against it. Yeah. A huge part is also intercourse magic. Which the Dawn was super against. And so it was very objective. It's not evil. It's using everything for your disposal. Anyways, so basically it's the same thing. It comes from these guys, the left hand and the right hand, right? And, you know, they'll tell you it's the same thing. Just the light-handed path has a little bit more rules to it, right? So I want you to remember that when you think of, you know, anyways, lost my train of thought there. Oh, yes, when you get into politics, right? I want you to remember that. These guys right here are the same exact thing. The same exact thing. They may have two different pictures. But they're the same exact thing. Or I should say, they come from one entity, right? That's why you see this paradigm. You know, you see in wars, one side will give weapons to this side, and that same group will give weapons to this side, so they control both sides, right? We need to remember that, <laughs> You know, and this whole right, le right hand politics and left hand politics is there to divide us, right? I don't know if I, you know, what Jesus said, a house, you know, that is divided against itself cannot stand. That's what they're doing. They're <laughs> crashing everything down so they can rebuild in their own image, right? Basically. Okay, and what was interesting, you know what, I should look for that. Was it this one? Yes, okay. Right-handed path, left-handed path, and the middle path. Let me just say, Jesus is the only way, but anyways. In the Indian religions of Hinduism, Buddhism, um, uh, Sikh, Sikhism, I think that's how you say that, Jainism, you have the right-hand path and the left-handed path. The right-hand path is the orthodox path. The left-hand path is the heterodox path. The right-hand path is typically, pay attention to this, collectivist in nature don't trust the right or the left while the left hand path strongly emphasizes more individualist approaches this is why you see on the left you see a lot of pleasure now right pleasure now all about them entitlement and from the right as well can't leave them out 
One is order, one is disorder. One leads to unity, the other disunity. I wouldn't say that, but anyways, one should not or note that both paths ready. Pay attention to this. Paths lead to the same place. Enlightenment. Okay. And we probably all know where that enlightenment leads. Okay. <laughs> so, um, Heraclitus argued. Now, here, here we go. Heraclitus argued that the way up and the way down are the same. This is why you get the whole um, as above, so below, right? The way, the way up, uh, so, and of course, with Christianity, the way up and the way down are not the same, right? The way up leads to heaven and the way down leads to hell. You have the way of the world. It all leads to the same place, right? Doesn't matter heaven, hell, it's all the same. You know, God says no. Right? There's one path, it's one way to Jesus Christ, right? <laughs> he is the door. But if you and if you notice there, collectivism. So, Mark five nine. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. So, this is what they want. This is where it leads to. This is where collectivism leads to. Where, my name is Legion, for we are many. So this is what you're known as, right? You're not known as, you know, Stephanie, Todd, do you know, or... Whoever your name is, Ashley, whatever. You're known as Legion, right? Or a number. <laughs> Instead of. So, let me just say both sides lead to collectivism, right? Like you had with the bad people in World War II. They were collectivists. Then you had the, the communists, right? They're collectivists as well, right? So I kind of disagree with this a little bit. You know, this, wherever, this. Because I think both of them lead. They're the same thing, right? They're the same thing. So both lead to collectivism. Oh, okay. So now I just want to end with this. When you start getting into groups, institutions, whatever it is, you, you stop thinking for yourself and you start adapting or adopting the personality, the, the ways of this group. But then when you disagree a little bit, what happens? You're kicked out, you know? Or if you try to get on the fence you say hey you know this lefty kind of makes some sense where you're not standing for anything and blah 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 you're being milk toast you know that's what you hear from the right side the left still thinks you're right even though you're in the center <laughs> you know and it gets ridiculous doesn't it for what for rich people who don't do anything who line their pockets and not ours? Is this why we're arguing? You know? Is this is this why we have people shooting each other? You know what I mean? For a donkey and an elephant? But anyways, guys. I thank you for watching. And you guys have a wonderful day.